This module introduces the basic building blocks of the Elm language, such as data types and functions. We are going to use these building blocks to create some simple web apps which can be viewed in the browser. Here is the plan for this module. In this clip, let's discuss Elm's basic data types and build the simplest Elm web app. Next, let's look into the main Elm operators so that we can do things such as adding numbers and concatenating strings. Conditions are required to implement business logic and we are going to look into if statements and case expressions. Functions are super important in Elm and we are going to have a closer look at some powerful features of Elm functions. Finally, web apps need to work with collections of data, such as lists and tuples, for example, to display more products in a shopping cart. In contrast to JavaScript, data types in Elm play a much more visible role. Getting used to thinking about data types is going to help you a lot in your Elm journey. Here are the basic Elm data types. Boolean is the simplest data type since it has only two possible values, true and false. In this example, the paid Boolean is set to true. The number type expects an integer or a float value. For example, the quantity number has the value 1, which is an integer. Numbers with fractions, such as 3.5, have the explicit float type. Remember from the previous module that char values are delimited with single codes, while string values use double codes as delimiters. These type annotations are optional, although highly recommended since they make types explicit. Fortunately, Visual Studio Code makes it easy to add them. To create our first Elm web app, we need to get a high-level idea about the journey of Elm code. Let's say we write some Elm code to create a web app. The Elm code is compiled into JavaScript since browsers cannot understand Elm code. The resulting JavaScript code is used with HTML code for the structure and content of the web app. Furthermore, CSS code is used for styling content and making it look awesome. These three ingredients are cooked together into a web app which users can open in their browsers. Again, browsers are not going to receive the original Elm code, only the resulting JavaScript code created from compiling the Elm code. Here is the simplest Elm web app. The first line is a comment. Two minuses comment the rest of the line. An Elm file is also a module. For example, hello.elm contains the hello module and it exposes all its content to be used by other modules. Modules can be imported so that their exposed content can be reused. The HTML module is a default dependency added automatically to the project when creating it. Main is special because it's the entry point of the hello module. This line is a bit confusing. Main receives the output of the text function which is imported from the HTML module. The confusing part is that Unlike JavaScript and plenty of other languages, Elm functions don't use parentheses to delimit arguments. A simple space is enough to separate the function and its argument. The text function just takes one string argument and displays the string in the web app. Very straightforward. Let's demo this web app. We are going to create the first web app with these steps. First, add Elm code from the previous slide to the hello module from the previous demo. Second, start the development web server by running Elm Reactor. Finally, open the page in the browser and inspect the page to see its underlying HTML code. In the hello.elm file, we need to add the main entry point and assign to it the output of HTML.txt function. Type main equals HTML. Notice that Visual Code is smart enough to suggest an auto import for the HTML module. Press enter and notice the new import statement. From the HTML module, we need the text function. So type dot text. The auto completion gives us more confidence that all is okay. Leave a space as a delimiter, then add the string argument. For the argument, we can of course write a new string and we can also use the existing greeting string. Press Ctrl S to save the file and have it formatted automatically. In the terminal, Exit the Elm REPL with Ctrl D, then run Elm Reactor to start the development web server. Press the Ctrl key and click the URL to open it in the browser. Then navigate to the source folder and then the hello.elm file. 
we get the hello world message. Congratulations, this is our very first Elm web app. Do you remember the journey of Elm code? How it gets compiled into JavaScript code, then it's mixed with HTML and CSS to produce a web app? This journey took place under the hood so that our Elm code resulted in this super simple web app. To check this, right click in the browser and inspect the page. This is the HTML code of the page. The hello world string is just added to the body of the page. The script part has a bunch of JavaScript code resulting from our Elm code. In this clip, we created a very basic Elm web app which just displays a string. Let's add more content to the web app and use more data types.